Okay, this is a short introduction on how to um, condition the dog to a positive reinforced recoil by a tone on the collar. So this is about the tone on the collar. <coughs> the advantages of the tone on any e-collar which has them as an option are um, the frequency is designed for the average dog. Today is a windy day. Blowing a whistle, the dog, the, the dog might not hear it if it's in the wrong direction, but the tone on the e-collar is the same decibel level to the dog at all the time, no matter where the dog is. That's the advantage. Um, they are very responsive to the tone on the e-collar, but then if they're trained enough, they are responsive to whistles as well. Um, the frequency on the whistle is, most whistles is very good for a dog's hearing. Voice, when the dog is distant or in wind, is not, even if you're using a, 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 an inflection, which I use, um, the inflection is just not good in, in bad conditions. And if the dog is in drive, it probably doesn't be really at all. Too many people put disobedience down to the dog disobeying a known command. A lot of the time, if you're using your voice, the dog just doesn't absorb it properly. Before you start using the tone on a collar or a whistle, or before, you know, before you use a whistle or any other audio signal, you must teach, the dog must be taught to recall in the first place. first condition it to a positive reinforcement which I'm going to do with my own dog now and the best way to do it is to get treats they're not a good reinforcer for a, a, a teenage dog or a, an adult dog That's, they're okay for puppies and for lures um, but they're not a powerful reinforcer um, you'll never get a dog recall in if you hold the treat out and it's flying off after some kind of spray so just do a short little game and at the same time press the tone on the collar before you start teaching the dog recall with the collar. The dog must already know recall anyway. So I'm going to call my dog in now. Um, I'm going to call my dog in now and show you the short little game during which I'll be pressing this beeper and she will hear the tone on the collar. The collar will there And if you watch closely, you'll notice that I'm going back from the dog all the time, or most of the time, which is a foundation for every recall. Thingy, good girl, here. Thingy, in. In, come on. Now this dog is obviously already conditioned to this, but I'm just going to... I'm just going to show you how you will start it anyway. Now this is a positive reinforcement associated with the tone. Ray! <laughs> yay! 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 Good girl! Ray! And that, do that three or four times and you can start to train the dog to recall to the tone on its own. Um, that's how you positively reinforce the tone on an e-collar. And just so you can hear it on this video, bingy. This is the tone on the e-collar. You can also use the tone instead of a clicker. Again, it has the advantages of the same decibel level and frequency all the time that the dog hears it at distance. But you do the same positive reinforcement before you start to use it as a, as a, a, instead of a clicker, as what I've just shown here. So you can use it, therefore, as a conditioned 
positive reinforcer when the dog has done something correct. Um, so the dog knows how to get the reward. Okay, Dennis Carthy, Hertfordshire. Recall her from this situation now. Um, and watch the enthusiasm of response. Now, recall there, there, immediate. Good girl, good girl. Oh, recall again. <laughs> Watch. Good girl. <coughs> no, I'm going to keep this up for a bit. Watch, watch the response for the recall. <laughs> okay, I think that's um, given a good representation, a, a, a normal representation, not that of uh, the esteemed. Rachel Casey Esquire of University of Bristol. God, what a drip that woman was. Good girl, good girl thingy. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Here she comes. <laughs> hey, good girl, dang it! Ha, 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 ha.